Hello, hello, it's good to see you. Hello, hello, we're glad you're here. We're stuck at home, but we can still have fun. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we're glad you're here. Hello, hello, it's good to see you. Hello, hello, we're glad you're here. We're stuck at home, but we can still have fun. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we're glad you're here. Hello and welcome back to Hashtag Sunday Kids Club. We hope you've had a super week. Let's sing another song. Let's sing Nothing's Too Big, Big, Big for His Power. Hey! We hope you enjoyed that song. We love a bit of Doug Hawley here at Hashtag Sunday Kids Club. Now today I've got with me a packet of playing cards. Playing cards can be used to play all sorts of games, but it can be used to do lots of fun things as well. Now the special thing about a deck of playing cards is that no two cards are the same. You get lots of different numbers and lots of different symbols, like we've got spades here and hearts there, and we've got do, 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 some clubs here, and we have diamonds as well, and there's some numbers, and there's also some pictures as well. Here's a king, and there's also queens in there, and jacks as well. In fact, there's a jack right there, that's handy. We're going to pick a card now, we're not going to look and see which card, we're going to pick one totally at random. Oh, would you like me to shuffle first? Always a good idea. If somebody asks you to pick a card, say, uh, 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 have you shuffled that deck first? Let's make sure we shuffle the deck first. Here we go. Shuffling the deck, shuffling the deck. There we go. That makes sure that all the cards are mixed up, which is always a good thing to make sure has happened. So let's pick a card at random. 
And now, normally I would ask you to do it for me, but you can't reach into the screen very easily and pick a card, so you're going to have to trust me on this. Let's have this card here. Ooh, we have got the six of clubs. There's a number six, and there's that funny black shape like a cauliflower. That's a club. Now, just in case you think it might be tricky to remember the six of clubs, I've got here a little ladybird sticker. Hello, little ladybird. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to stick the ladybird right into the middle of our six of clubs. Just there. There's a little baby bird. Da, 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 da. Right then. So I'm going to put our ladybird card onto the top of the deck so it's nice and safe. Shall we check and just make sure our ladybird's still there, nice and safe? Yeah? Let's have a little look. So we should have our ladybird on the top of the deck. And here is our. Ooh! Oh, that's not our little ladybird. That is the Jack of Hearts. That's not our ladybird. Ooh, where has our ladybird gone? Let's have a little dig through the cards and see if we can't find our ladybird card. Let's see. Um, ladybird, where are you? Are you there, little ladybird? Hello, where are you? Where are you, little ladybird? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I could... I, don't, I didn't hear him anywhere. He's not a very talkative, little ladybird. But I have an idea. Sometimes you can attract ladybirds and cars with static electricity. So this isn't magic, it's more science. So you rub your finger on the top of your head like this and it starts a little bit of static electricity in your fingers. Can you do it too? Rub your finger on your head like this and then reach out into the screen and give me some static electricity. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm going to take a little bit more. That's it. And then we rub the top of the cards just like this. And then we have got our card back again. There's our little ladybird, chappy. Hello, little ladybird. Now, we want to show you something really rather extraordinary. So, I don't know if you saw me shuffling cards before. The first card shuffle was what we call a Hindu shuffle. Let me show you again. So that's, you take some cards off the top and then you lay them over the top, just like so. There's also a shuffle called an overhand shuffle. And you might see grown-ups do this if you play card games at home. And that's where you lift the card, you do them over your hands, just like this. So, do, 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 do. and then there's another shuffle as well. It's called the flip flop shuffle. Have you ever heard of a flip flop shuffle? Probably not because I've just made it up right now, this second. And what you do is you take some cards off the top of your deck and then you flip them over so they're facing the wrong way. And you take more cards and you mix them up and you flip them over so that you get some cards facing one way and some cards facing the other way and it makes a really big crazy mushy card mess just like that and so what happens is you have cards that are back to front and you get some cards that are front to back and then sometimes really crazy you even get some cards that are back to back how mad is that but then what you do is you do a magic click, just like this, click, and then all the cards go back facing the right way, just like so. And we've tidied them all up again, so that's the important thing. If you make a mess, always make sure you tidy up. But if we keep going through, da, 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 oh, we found a very special card. We found our ladybird card. Hey, hey, it was easy to find. He was the only one that was facing the right way. Well done, little ladybird card. That was very, very clever. There he is. <laughs> that was good fun. All that thinking about things that get lost and then found again reminds me of a story in God's Great Big Book. God's Great Big Book. God's Great Big Book. It's full of stories we can learn from everywhere we look. Whatever gets you down, whatever you frown, you'll find all the answers in God's great big book. God's great big book, God's great big book. It's full of stories we can learn from everywhere we look. Whatever gets you down, whatever makes you frown, you'll find all the answers in God's great big book.
you'll find all the answers in God's great big book. Today's story in God's great big book is another parable. Do you remember what a parable is? A parable tells us what God's love is like, how we should love each other and what the kingdom of God is like. Now in this parable there is a young man who has an older brother and a dad and they all love each other very much. The father loves his two sons and the oldest son works really hard for his dad but the youngest son well he's a little bit self-centered and thinks he knows best. One day he goes up to his dad and says hey dad do you remember saying that when you die I get to have half your money? And the father said yes I said that when I die I'll give half of everything I have to your older brother and half to you as well. That seems fair. And the younger brother says, yeah, it does, but I want my money now. I think I'm ready to go and see the world. And the father was a little bit sad because he didn't really want to see his son go, but he gave him the money and wished him all the best. And off that young son went and he went and he had the biggest parties and the biggest feasts and he had loads and loads of friends that partied with him every single night and he had the best time and he spent his money on lots of flashy things and lots of glamorous things and he had a brilliant time. But then suddenly the money ran out. And when the money ran out, his friends didn't think he was very cool anymore. He certainly couldn't buy them fancy meals and he couldn't go out partying anymore. And so the young son had to get a job. Now in those days, the worst job he could have, the very worst job he could have was to feed pigs. And that young son had to go and feed pigs for a farmer for almost no money. And one day he was so hungry that he watched the pigs eating their food and he thought, I'm just so hungry. I think I'm going to have to eat the pig food. And that young son, he went and ate some of that yucky piggy food with the pigs in the mud. And he thought, what am I doing? My dad hires his workers and he pays them a fair wage and he makes sure they have plenty to eat. What am I doing eating pig food when I can go and work for my dad and he'll look after me and make sure that I'm well fed and well paid? And he said, I know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and find my dad and I'm going to say, Dad, I made a huge mistake. I'm really, really sorry please can I come and work for you instead? And so off that son went. And as he went, he wondered, oh, will my dad be cross with me? Will my dad tell me off? Will he be disappointed with me? Do you think he'll say that he doesn't want me as his hired hand? Do you think he'll say that I've been a bad son? Do you think he might tell me to go away? Well, what the son didn't know was that his dad had been waiting, waiting almost every day since he left, to see if his son would come home. And when he saw his youngest son coming over the hill, he went rushing up to meet him. And his son started to say, Dad, I'm really, really sorry, I made a huge mistake. But his dad gave him the biggest hug. And he called everyone over and he said, come and join me. We're going to have the biggest party. We're going to have our fattest calf on the barbecue. And we're going to have nice drinks like Coke and lemonade. And we're going to have cake and we're going to dress up in our best clothes. You can't wear this. Let me get you something really beautiful to wear and put rings on your fingers and, and dress you up really beautiful because you are so valuable and I'm so happy that my lost son has come home. And that's exactly what they did. They had a massive, massive party to celebrate the youngest son coming home. So for the last 
three weeks at Hashtag Sunday Kids Club, we've been looking at three lost and found stories. We've had the lost sheep, we've had the lost coin, and now we've had the lost son, sometimes called the prodigal son. And in each story, something or someone is lost, but then they're found again. And that happens in three different ways. So in the lost sheep, the shepherd has to go and find that lost sheep. And that tells us that God will seek us out, especially if we could be in trouble. And in the lost coin, the woman searches and searches and searches until she finds that lost coin. And that tells us that God will keep on searching for us, but that we're more valuable and precious than gold and silver and money. And in the prodigal son, the father does something completely different. He says, you want to separate from me, then that's fine. I'm going to give you what you need and use it wisely. And even when the son spends all his money and has his parties and has all his food and all his jazzy things, he still comes back and is able to say sorry. And the father forgives him and the father waits for him. I think not just because he wants him to come home, but because he knows he will come home again. And that's like God too. God waits for us to come back to him. God doesn't give up on us. God knows that if we've gone away from him or if we think we know best and we want to go off and do something really crazy, then if we come back and say sorry, then God will embrace us and tell us that he loves us very, very much. And... There's a massive party in heaven with cake and coke and lemonade and dancing and musical chairs and little party hats. And it's amazing. It really is. So that's why Jesus told these three stories about things that are lost and found, because we are so precious and so valuable to God, more precious than sheep, more precious than money. He wants us to come back to him and to always be with him. And when we do... There's that massive party in heaven. I wonder if you know what this is. It's not a maze, it's a labyrinth. A maze has lots of dead ends and you have to try and find the right path. But a labyrinth has just one long path that goes from the outside and around and around all the way to the middle and then you follow the path back out again. You can't get lost in a labyrinth. There's only one way in and one way out. People have been using labyrinths for a very long time to pray. People can go into really big labyrinths that you walk around. And some people just use labyrinths like this that you can follow with your finger. Now today, for our prayers, we're going to be thinking about times when we might feel lost, when we might feel very far away from God, and when we maybe wonder where God is in our lives. And we can give all these things that worry us to God, and all those times when we feel lost and afraid, because God wants to hear our problems, and he wants to know how we're feeling, and how things are going for us too. So, as we pray, I'm going to trace my finger along the map, on the labyrinth, and you can pray to God very quietly, whatever is troubling you. And you can find a labyrinth like this too. There'll be a link in the comments on YouTube so that you can print off one like this, or you can search on Google for a finger labyrinth and you can find a different one if you find a pattern that you like. God is listening, yes he can, he is hearing all our worries, listening, hearing all he can. God is listening, can he hear us? God is listening, 
Yes, He can. He is hearing all our worries, listening, hearing all He can. Dear God, we know that whenever we feel lost or frightened or confused or far away from you, that you never stop loving us. Lord, we ask that you hear all our worries and all our prayers and stay close to us and help for us to come back to you so that we can be safe in your arms. Amen. We really love seeing what you get up to in the week, whether it's art or music or baking or construction, whatever you do, we love to see it here at Hashtag Sunday Kids Club. Let's see what our friends have been up to this week. Neris has painted a beautiful picture with unicorn colours with a very important reminder to always be ourselves unless we can be a unicorn and then we should probably be a unicorn instead. It looks like you had lots of fun painting that Neris, well done. Dane has been doing a fundraising challenge to raise money for his school. He's chosen to learn to count to 10 in four different languages and count to 20 in a language he already knew. Dane wants to show us his counting to 20 in Arabic. Let's hear that now. Hello, Tiger Sunday Kids Club. I'm going to count to 10 to from, 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 from 1, 0 to 20 in Arabic. Zora, Zesta, Wahid, Ethne. Dane, that was absolutely amazing. You've worked so hard learning those numbers and I'm sure you're going to raise lots of money for your school. Well done, Dane. Thank you so much to everyone who shared pictures and videos of what they've been up to. And if you would like to see what you've been up to on the screen here too, then you can email me at layworker.tmcc at gmail.com. We'd love to be able to show everybody. And now I'm afraid it's time for us to go, but we'll see you again in two weeks' time. Bye-bye for now. Goodbye, goodbye, it was good to see you. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. We'll have more fun when we see you next time. With cross and laughs and silly songs, we'll see you then. Goodbye, goodbye, it was good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. We'll have more fun when we see you next time. With crowds and laughs and silly songs, we'll see you then.